Perhaps Amari Rodgers will help keep Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. Maybe it's a stretch, but the Packers did select the Clemson wide receiver with the 85th overall pick. Actually, they traded up to take him, and he's the highest drafted receiver since Devontae Adams went 53rd overall in 2014. So we'll see what happens here, but Amari Rodgers headed to Green Bay where he does want to join the team. All right, let's head out to Cleveland where we find our experts Ryan Wilson and NFL insider Jonathan Jones. Uh, Ryan, what do you make of the pick here? And then ultimately, does this have any impact on Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> Well, Akeem, before you cut to us, JJ and I were dancing partly to keep warm, but also to celebrate the fact that the Packers finally got Aaron Rodgers some wide receiver help. Last year's draft class, the deepest draft class in human history, zero wide receivers drafted by the Green Bay Packers. Didn't even sign one as an undrafted free agent. First round yesterday, they took a cornerback in Eric Stokes. They came back, and then they got uh, someone that Josh Myers, the center. To help replace Corey Lindsey, which makes sense. And then finally, in the third round, they got Amari Rodgers. And here's the great thing about Amari Rodgers, Akeem. He is basically Randall Cobb. And that's exactly what this offense was lacking. A player who can go in the slot, do all the dirty work in the middle of the field. He's a threat on the short, intermediate, and deep routes. And uh, pair that with Devontae Adams. You have Aaron Jones in the backfield, but you hit on it. The, the big question mark, of course, what does this do for, for Aaron Rodgers' state of mind? Uh, it appears that he is very much set on not coming back to, to Green Bay. In part, I would imagine, J.J., because they didn't get him any help. Yep. That's a huge part of it. That's right, Ryan. And look, Amari Rodgers, just to talk about him a little bit more. Five foot nine, 212 pounds, so he's short, but he's thick with two C's. And yeah, when you look at what he did last season for the Clemson Tigers, it took him 77 catches to get 1,000 yards. 68 of those catches came in the slot. So, Ryan, you hit on it. He's absolutely going to be in the slot. That's really all that he does. And, you know, you look at his average depth of target, it was around 7.8 or so last season uh, he only had eight yards after the catch so he's always getting the ball behind the line of scrimmage or right there in that short and intermediate route and then he's not doing a whole lot with it you know he did come back from that ACL tear in about six months six plus months so that was an impressive thing that he did it'll be interesting I don't think that this is enough though this is one of those things that if you wanted to keep Aaron Rodgers around you should have done this a while ago. You should have given him a first-round receiver much longer ago. And really, frankly, it would have been too late if they had taken a wide receiver even last night. And I wrote that for CBSSports.com that, hey, maybe this will be the olive branch that the Green Bay Packers organization tries to extend to Aaron Rodgers. Hey, we want you to stay. You're our guy. But nah, they didn't do that last night. They are intent on Aaron Rodgers remaining in Green Bay. They say they have no interest in trading him. But listen, Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to be there anymore. I very much believe that he has very likely played his last down with the Green Bay Packers organization. It is not out of the realm of possibility that he returns. And we're going to hear more from Aaron Rodgers this weekend when he finds some microphone and some camera when he's uh, enjoying a mint julep at the Kentucky Derby. So this saga will continue with Aaron Rodgers. But Amari Rodgers' addition, I don't think that changes the math at all for the three-time NFL MVP. Jonathan, does this feel like a desperation pick by the Packers? <laughs> well, I think Ryan hit it really well. I mean, they needed a corner. They can't possibly think that Kevin King is ultimately going to be the answer over there at CB2. And then they got the center there. They needed Corey Lindsley's replacement. And so now, yeah, you do need that uh, that other wide receiver. You need that slot guy. I think Randall Cobb and that comp is a really smart one, at least for what the Green Bay system is. So they are plugging and putting guys in position and in places where they need to. It's just the fact that they made the worst decision in the entire NFL draft last year when they took when they when they traded up to take a quarterback and then they didn't tell their quarterback the face of the franchise they were going to do it which of course has now led to this uh, dissolution of marriage. So uh, it really goes back to a year ago and there was nothing they could have done last night and really there's nothing they could have done tonight with a third round receiver.
Yeah, Hakeem, it feels like a case of too little, too late. Yeah. Uh, if they traded up last year, and I was okay with the Jordan Love selection, but if you trade up last year for, say, Justin Jefferson, we're having a different conversation. Much different conversation. 1,400 yards uh, receiving for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, he was a playmaker, and I'm sure Aaron Rodgers saw a lot of that because he's in the same division uh, as J.J. And, and the Minnesota Vikings there. But instead of getting a wide receiver at any point in the draft, as I just mentioned last year, or free agency, I was begging them to, to take Will Fuller in the trade before the deadline last year. That didn't work out. Will Fuller got suspended, so it wasn't really uh, necessarily going to work out anyway. But just the thought of trying to enhance that wide receiver core. And we know that Aaron Rodgers is frustrated for reasons beyond that. But I'll just say this, Akeem, and, and then I'll throw it back to you there. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is two things, in addition to being a fantastic football player. He can be vindictive, <laughs> and he can hold a grudge and be stubborn. And I think we're going to see that play out in the coming weeks and months as we get closer to the summer and then closer to the start of that 2021 NFL season. This reminds me of that old um, iconic, I don't know if you'd even say iconic, probably not, but the old memorable quote from Bill, Bar Bill Parcells. Um, if they want you to cook the dinner, at least make, maybe go let you shop for some of the groceries. Like, I, I get it, Aaron Rodgers, that's not his job to go out and try to get these guys or get, but at least, like, this is a guy that won you a Super Bowl, at least let him have a say or, like, be in the draft room. Like, this, this, this seems like this could have been avoided, Jonathan. Yeah. It could have been. And that's the thing. That's why this with Aaron Rodgers is not about money. The contract extension has been offered to Aaron Rodgers. It's out there on the table. If Aaron Rodgers wanted to sign it, it would have been signed by now. It's not signed because he doesn't want to be there anymore. And it's not because he doesn't like his teammates. It's not because uh, LaFleur decided to kick that field goal against the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Who made the decision? And who signed off on the decision to not add weapons when you were very clearly in your championship window? Look at what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just did when they got Tom Brady and how they surrounded him, not just with weapons, but with protection along the offensive line. They built around Tom Brady. Well, if you're Aaron Rodgers, you say, listen, I, I have two MVPs in my name. I'm about to get a third. We just went to the NFC title game. We got the break speed office by the San Francisco 49ers. But we're right there knocking on the door. And then we have the ability to get back there. I don't believe that the Green Bay Packers are one player away, one rookie away. Justin Jefferson may not have won them the NFC title game over the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He certainly would have been more effective and more dynamic to that offense than Jordan Love was not being out there on the field. And I think that's ultimately the point where Aaron Rodgers is like, listen, I'm not getting any younger. I have rare talent use it use it to the best of its ability and i understand his frustrations and so eventually it's going to bubble over and to ryan's point we know the kind of guy that aaron Rodgers is that's not a dig to him at all but you talk about vindictive you talk about a little bit sensitive maybe a touch petty yeah that's aaron Rodgers. yeah and i think jj touched on it uh, a few moments ago this ain't a situation where it's Drew Locke and you're bringing in Teddy Bridgewater. This is Aaron Rodgers, first ballot Hall of Famer, won all the MVPs, won the Super Bowl. You're not telling him that you're trading up for a quarterback. You're not giving him exactly what he needs to take the next step with his offense. The, the offense, by the way, Akeem, is 95% of the way there. The missing 5% is trying to help Devontae Adams and Aaron Jones out along with Aaron Rodgers. And for whatever reason, they refuse to do it. They drafted a running back in round two last year, tied in round three. Neither played all that much, and maybe those guys work out. But as we sit here, Aaron Rodgers is frustrated, and we get that he's frustrated. And now the question becomes, how does this end? It doesn't feel like it's going to end particularly well. And there was a point early in the, in the offseason uh, where – we were talking about Deshaun Watson perhaps not being back in Houston. Russell Wilson was upset what was going on in Seattle, although I think he was just venting and, and blowing off steam at that point. But now it looks like Aaron Rodgers is in a situation where he may not be, be back after Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff switched places and Carson Wentz got traded. So it is insane to think that in, in a league where it's all about the franchise quarterback and nothing else, that we've seen so much movement potentially among these franchise quarterbacks. Just think if, if they didn't have Robert Tunyon this season. I mean, this guy uh, was was signed away from the Lions, and, and, and like, if he didn't have the production he had, and that's that part and thanks to Aaron Rodgers, but like, th then it's like he had he had so many touchdowns in the red zone. I think seven of them in the red zone that he caught. And if they don't have a guy like that, I mean, they lucked out with Bobby Tunyon, and now it just feels like, hey, we, this is a little too late, uh, as you said, Ryan, for Aaron Rodgers. It's gonna be. Uh, 
this is the big storyline of draft weekend no matter what. Last year, it was Jordan Love. Now this year, it's Aaron Rodgers wanting to be out of Green Bay. We'll see how it plays out here as the weekend continues in Cleveland. Ryan Wilson, Jonathan Jones here for us on CBS Sports HQ. And uh, for all things NFL, check out all things covered with Brian McFadden, Patrick Peterson, and check out Pick 6 Podcast with Ryan Wilson, uh, Will Brinson, and the super friends John Breach. They have round-by-round -round reaction to the NFL draft. Download and subscribe today.